Good afternoon and welcome to my first um, YouTube workshop for intermediate people um, who've been following my work on Facebook at Emma Hunt Heart on uh, Facebook for the last, well this is the 15th week I think now that we've been doing these. Um, I started doing these for free because I realised how much people needed a distraction during lockdown and this is a pandemic um, and the lockdown comes to a close and the pandemic will still be here so we will need to have these moments of peace and quiet so I hope this puts you in a really peaceful place um, this is for intermediate I do do beginner workshops as well so if you find it overwhelming um, you can find me on Facebook I don't know how to ask, or you can find them on YouTube um, as we get to collect them all together because at the moment we've only got the very first ones that we've done um, so the best place to go and access them at number four now at least is um, on YouTube so I just um, bring this into shop to begin with this is the painting that we're going to be doing here. I'm just trying to bring it into focus a little bit. Um, this is by Amanda. And um, she Am Am Amanda Fraser, and she's absolutely lovely. So um, please give us some love. I mean, this is an incredible photograph of the poppy fields. Uh, I know that you guys have been really enjoying seeing poppy fields lately um, in my artwork. So, and also I know, know that you want to do trees. So I thought this would be a really nice one. It's occurred before. So um, please give Amanda Fraser some love. She's been very kind in letting us look, use this today. So what we'll do is we'll continue on um, as usual. I've got pastel pencils. If you haven't got pastel pencils, it's not the end of the world. You can use the sharp edge of your pastel. These are the colours, roughly, that I'll be using. I may dip in and find some more pastels along the way. We'll just see how the colours blend and how it all comes together in the image. Um, we've got a lovely pale blue sky and a really nice white... Um, uh, sunset going over the hills um, and I think this will be a lot a lot of fun for you guys to put together and um, just create something that you can be very happy with okay so we'll get started then so I'll take the palette away um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take I've got a bunch of pastel pencils here all kinds of manners of them some of them are a bit dirty some of them need sharpening but we'll probably dip into a lot of these as we go on um, but I'm just for the sake of drawing in the outline um, I might use just a slightly light pencil, um, I've got a cream one here, because there are lots of different colours going on, so I just want to put in my indications of where this whole thing begins and ends. So we've got, we haven't got much of a sky really, have we? It's probably just coming down maybe only as far as this. It doesn't have to be a very straight line, because these are just grasses, it's not like a watermark. So just very, just very gently and, you know, just quietly just put your line in. The hills, obviously, I want them to be correct, but for now I'm just putting in a little bit of a, an idea of where I'm going, because we're, colouring, we're essentially going to be colouring in. So I just want to make sure that I'm not going over my lines where there's dark and where there's light. I mean, you may find when you do this big tree here, if you put too much pastel on the paper initially, it's going to make your tree look very, very pale. So when you're doing this, do bear in mind the strength of your pastels, the creaminess and just how much is going onto the paper. As per usual, I always use the soft side and um, I don't use the textured side. I find that the pastels do stick better and it's okay as long as you're using a good, a good fixative, it's not a problem. So just bring that over here a little more. So I've just got a, a basis, an idea of where I'm going with this. First thing I'm going to do is I've got some very pale blue um cream and white and there isn't much going on really in the sky other than these three colors i might need to put some more deeper blue in but let's just see for now how this applies so yeah we probably put a little bit more deeper in so i'm just using the flat side of the pastel at the moment i'm i'm bearing in mind there's a huge sun here so when we come in and do these colors we have to remember that otherwise we'll end up with a green sun so I'm just at the moment just highlighting the different areas where there's blue. It comes quite far down. Whereas I say we definitely need a little bit more of a deeper blue, I think, just slightly deeper, just for the, just for the edges there. So I'm now I'm just really just going to get right stuck into this. All of this area is creamy or white. So I'm not going to get too excited about applying anything there just now. And then we've got this pale cream kind of glow below the hills as well. So I'm just getting right into it, not, 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 not messing around at all today. So we've got a sun here, and we'll get that in now so we know where we're at. We can make that nice and thick and big and bold. 
a circular motion and then I'm going to push all that white straight in when I get there. Cream again around the edges. For now we're just putting in the basis of the shading that's in the sky. And this is probably quite different how you've seen it being done before. But usually we have quite a linear blend. If we go from just like one colour down to another colour. And because we've got this sun, I want to get the shapes in correct right from the off in. Um, just to try and create this ambience that's going on here. It's such a delightful photograph. And I want to do it justice today for you. So there we go. And I'm going over into the yellow there a little bit as well. So... As per usual, make sure you've got a cloth at hand to keep your fingers clean. Flat three fingers, circular motion. And I'm just going to push that in, that push that pigment into the paper. And I'm just going to stay around, roughly around the one set of colour at a time. Because I don't want to muddy up the yellow and I don't want to muddy up the blue. But we're definitely going to need a bit of a deeper blue up there, so we'll get that in a minute. And the yellow I'm just brushing in. Just to create that hue and yeah I'm not too worried about the yellow so clean fingers again let's try and do the same on the other side for this pale blue just circular motion or so to bring it down run over your yellow maybe a little but we're not putting the pastel on too strong because we do know we're aware there's a big tree that's going to be living here and the more pastel we put the paler that tree will be so bear that in mind when you're doing this there we go so we're starting to get already a little idea of something and i'm going straight in with my clean fingers white is the lightest so i'm going to start blending my white first circular motion Keep away from the yellows as much as you can. You've gone over into the yellow a little bit, but that's because it's a nice hazy sun. That's what you want to achieve. And now this, this yellow, we can start blending in on both sides, within the white and the blue. And we'll keep on building up the intensity of these colours as we go along. A nice circular move. Get that circular thing back. And then I'm just using a side to side swoop just to sort of meld in that blue and yellow on the edges. So looking back at this again, um, looking at the different colours and the glow and everything that's going on, we definitely do need a stronger blue. Sometimes we don't really know until we apply it what we need. Um, so I've got a more of a, a strong blue here. And I'm just going to apply it at the top. And I'm going to push that down, right down into the colours to give it a bit more striking. Some over here as well. Not too strong. Just going to stand on the less. Circle your fingers. Your lighter colour will lighten this hue up a bit, the, the light blue that was underneath. So that will bring it into a nicer shade. And I'm just going to probably bring that all the way down to the yellow actually. So just circular movements again. And you're just pushing your pigment around the page and it's just so relaxing it just puts you in a nice happy place and we have no worries here do we no worries at all come in a little bit more blue just a little bit i'm just stroking the paper here i just feel it's still a little bit too pale and then just push that into the blue underneath the pale blue okay and we'll just work on this until we feel that we're emulating what's in, what's in the photograph. So again, I just want to make this sort of white sun a little bit more standy out -y. A little bit more intense pastel. Um, I think that the sort of corona of the sun could do with um, just a little bit more definition as well. So I'm just going to try and get a nice circular shape here. And if you want, you can even draw it in a little bit until you've got your lines. And it's easier then to see that you've got a circle and not an oval. And it's not quite a perfect circle, but you know, it doesn't have to be amazing because it is slightly bad. It's blurred by this um, yellowness that we have there. Clean fingers, 
have a few of blend around the edges. I'm not being too pretty, too too precious about this because it is a blurry sun, a hazy sun. Mm. We're satisfied now that we've got rid of most of the paper as well, and we can move on. So I think we'll just have a little bit extra, which I haven't included in my palette. There is a slight pinkish haze around the sun looking at this. So with a very pale pink, I'm just going to trace very, very lightly around the edges here just to emphasise this pinkish hue. And it might not really show up in the finished picture, but it's there and, you know, you've just got them different hues going on. Again, circular motion. I'm just going to roughly blend that in. I think that's where, which point the blue comes into it. So it just adds a little bit more definition to this burst of light. There we go. And then the next part of everything is really just going to be about filling in this area with colour. And um, the first thing that we've got on the left here, and they're more like a sort of bluish colour, so I'm just going to remove these for now. I think we've used them as well as we need to use them for the, for the moment. Yeah, I'm just going around there, just making this nice and smooth again. I'm sure that I'm happy with this, but I might I may come in and touch it up. But sometimes everything looks a bit different once you start to put foregrounds and things like that. So, um, the next part of it, we have some quite pale blue hills here. Now, I want to make them reasonably pale, so I'm actually going to make sure that I do use a bit of the white, uh, the bluish white, just to soften. Um, this blue. I don't want it to be as strong as it looks. As you can see, it's quite a deep blue. But we can apply a light colour and just like allow that to soften anything that we put on top. So I'm just going to basically now just do a shaded area, roughly capturing those trees and where they live, like so. And then we have a tree here, so I'm not going to go any further because, again, I don't want that tree to um, disappear because I put too much pastel around it. All I am going to do is just push it along a little bit so there's something underneath where the tree lives and it's not just plain paper. So push it along, but keep it nice and thin. And now we can start colouring in these hills a bit more with this darker blue. And I wanted it to be softer, so that's why the white is underneath, whitish blue. So now I'm just going to work on the shading that's in these hills because there's quite a lot of a lot of information actually going on there. Because it's not just straightforward, oh, it's this colour or that colour. There's a lot of washing out and misty looking. So I'm just doing the outline like I've done there. And now I'm only going to place a little bit of light um, covering with this pastel. I don't want to go in too deep with it. I'm going to allow the white underneath just to make a bit more sense of it and soften this colour so it's a bit lighter. Just by pushing it along like so. And softening it it's a very very light hill there's not much there and then I'm just going to go in again and just reiterate these lines these outlines because you don't want to go over your line with your finger so the best thing to do really is to try and just um, keep a thick line on there so that when you come to blend it you can pull it down and you can push it along if you want to but you're not touching the edge of your hills, which is, is, is vital because you get muddy hills then and muddy lines and things don't make much sense. So I'm just doing that to keep that line quite strong. And give it a blow. And then immediately under here, I'm just going to apply a bit more of this whitish colour because we have some, some low le le level, it looks like hills um, with trees on because it's more like a light green. So I'm just softening that again. And I've got a middling green. I think we've actually no, we've gone for a bit darker. We've got this green. We can always lighten it up if it's too dark. And I'm just very, very lightly tracing the top of these trees. All it needs is just a little outline, just a little respect for something that lives up there. It's in the photograph. And we'll soften it down again and lighten it if we need to. It's not a problem. So I'm just make sure that we can always see you there. And then just with a single push again, try and stay off your lines and then you can judge if you need to lighten it, I certainly think I do. So I'm going back in with the white, just going to lighten that line a little bit more, just soften it underneath because it's definitely 
softer colour underneath. And then, so we've got a tree here, and we could draw the outline of that tree where it starts and ends if you wanted to. So let's make a commitment to this. So I'm just going to pen in with this cream colour, roughly where this tree starts and ends. So we'll say it ends about here, I think. And then this area, we have this highlighted hair area again. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover it in cream. We're going to bring it right down to the line. And then we'll put the highlighted um, line of uh, hills over it. So let's bring it quite close down. We've got trees above it. And I'll blend it. So make sure it goes in. There we go. Nice and soft. And then over here in this area, we have the faintest of trees, really. Um, you could use a grey, um, you, you know, you could use whatever colour you like, but you need to pick something that's quite pale and light. So I've got a, I've got a tiny piece of this grey. Um, I'm just going to try this and see. It might be too dark, because even that is quite a strong colour, but we're gonna, we can soften it because the yellow is there. So again, I'm just very, very softly... I'm tracing the indication of what looks like some hills are living here, but we don't really see much of it. It's so far away in that heat. And then just push right along the line. It's just a hint of things going on. It's so distant and the sun's burning up. We don't want to see more than that. That is all we need. That is it. That is it. That is perfect. Um, you could maybe even go a little lighter if you wanted to. Um, but you can, you can still soften it a bit more and a bit more just by applying pressure. You put cream over the top of it if you like. And notice over here, it's almost all together disappeared. So just apply a little bit of cream to soften that even more. I can push the cream back in and over. You can do all sorts of things with that. And then we do have some trees that are living just above here. Um, so we will go into that in a minute. I think the next thing we'll do is we'll do just this there's a strip of green land just before the poppies start. Um, so I've got quite a nice colour for that. Different greens, um, all different things. This one will do for now, which is um, probably a middling colour. And all I'm going to do now is remembering that that's my line. I'm going to start creating this line of tree of, um, of, of, of actually, I think that is too dark. Excuse me, we'll just try and... Um, I'll try and like, because we've got a yellowy green somewhere. I think what we'll do is we'll just go in with this, um, this is a soft, kind of nondescript green, sort of browny green. And then we can apply the colours beyond that when we get there. Okay, so I'm just using um, the flat side of the pastel. Not too worried about the lines. Bearing in mind that I know what's going on here and there, that we've got all these little things that are meeting up. We have trees. That are going to live just under there. So just give a wiggle to your pastel, just a wiggle, and just bring it across over here where you have more grasses. This line is definitely bigger than I started off doing because it, it that's that's more create. So I'm just going to come back here and do a little up and down, up and down scooch, just like so. It doesn't have to be exact because nature's not exacting. And we'll just come up a little higher here, I think, with our low lands. And then we're going to put some trees in just underneath there. There we go. So we'll get this done and then we're going to put a whole load of colour down here. And it'll be you'll be wondering where them poppies are ever going to appear, but they will. And then all I'm going to do now is just an up and down little blend. Because the grasses are growing that way. I tend to move the pastel in the direction that it's living. Or whatever it is that I'm doing. Because it always helps just with texture and everything. So just an up and down wiggle, move across, move across, up and down wiggle. And already it's starting to look like distance grass, even though we don't have that information yet. And we have a tree to put here and all sorts of things going on. So just over in this area here, we can start to, to think about these trees that live far, far away. They're just little little sticks of trees, very dark though. So um, I'm going to go in here with quite a dark green. And I'm just going to try and just scrape at it on that line. It's just a tight, tight little scrape. That's all. Just up and let go, up and let go. And we can embellish the, this further if we want to in a bit. 
But for now, I'm just concentrating on staying on the line where the grasses are. And just little, little scrapes up and down like that. Some of them will be living alone in a little group. And then some of them are much happier in big groups. So, you know, just, just be quite, um, just try and be quite random with these strokes. Because if they're too linear, it won't look convincing. And then we might have just some little tiny ones peeking up over there, peeking up there. And then we can just embellish this a little bit more with pencil if we want to. But that's about the top of it is, to, you know, we can make that line by using the sharp line of the pencil a little bit more meaningful. So let's put a little, right, that's where it begins and ends over that hill. And that just gives us a little bit more definition. And then if you wanted to, you can go in with a pencil and just highlight these edges. I'm just going very light because this green is not the right colour. Um, but, but, the, but the tops of these trees would receive more light, so, so it, it's believable. Um, and just flicking, just in little bits and bobs and little dips. Not very much at all, but it just sets it off a little bit better. And now we really do believe that there's some evergreens even out there, don't we? And that's about it for that. I think what we'll do next is we'll start on doing the trees because I don't want you to destroy your work going over it with your hand. Um, initially, we'll just put in some more details just here, which is more dark than anything else is bushy. So again, just a wiggle with your pastel. It's quite a shift bush here almost rectangular and then it drops down and then we add some more little brambles it's just a wiggle and then we can make this more descript and everything else as we come along and then just respect your line again and fill that in with your colour and you can just push it about till you make sure that it blends there we go and yet again we can just go into those bushes and apply some little low lights and highlights of the pencil if you want to just to make it look a little bit more believable. Just some little scrapes here and there. Just tiny ones, not a lot really. Just to show that, yep, the sun's on me as well. Lapping it up, loving it. There we go. It's already starting to look like quite an interesting painting and hopefully, you know, we'll come out with this. Everyone will be delighted what they've produced. So now we need to think about we have a tree that's living here, there's a little bit of hill behind it showing up. So I'm just going to basically apply a little bit of cream there to bring that line down. And then with this very light grey, I'm just putting the indication that something was also far, far away. Where the hills and the mountains were there. You can just push that into that area again. Just want the indication, nothing more. And now we can start to think about trees. Um, I know quite a few of you have said to me that you find trees quite difficult. Um, they are and they're not. Sometimes you can just, just fail because you just, just didn't observe properly the shape of the tree. Um, everybody knows a tree has a big fat trunk and then lots and lots of branches and lots of other smaller branches and twigs and then feathers. Uh, so feathers, <laughs> what am I on about? And then leaves and things like that there. So. The first thing you need to do is be quite brave. I'm going to take away my green black. I don't want green black for this. I'm going to use a black black. Um, you could maybe use actually a mixture of both because the tree does, it's very, very silhouetted. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do so the darker bits in black and then the rest of it will be in the blacky green. So we're going to have these two colours on board here at least and probably lighter. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly just add some more little bits on there to make that look more interesting. And I'm just looking at, I'm observing the shape of this tree. So it has quite a strong branch that comes up like that. And just look at your picture and you can see the main branches are these two big ones here. This one's slightly thinner, it's slightly curved, but it doesn't matter if your tree's very straight, all trees work differently. Um, So for now all I'm drawing in is just the trunk and the main branches from this trunk. 
there's quite a, an area here where you can't really see much of what's happening because it's very dense. So just give it a wiggle and try not to worry about that at the moment. Just concentrate on your main branches that you can see. So this bit I'm just going to do some wiggling because this is going to be quite heavily shaded. It will remind me and it will help just bring some more depth into the leaves and the branches when they come back to it. And just give it a little pat. We don't really care about that being a strong line. And then we have quite a decent sized one that comes over and across quite a bit. So get that one in. Don't be afraid of your trees. And then we have other bits and bobs. There's another thickish one there that's wiggling off and then turning. And we've got all sorts of things here now and we can start to embellish it from our own mind when we get to a certain point. Um, you could do with it, you could do it from your mind anyway, really. Um, as long as you just, you just understand the way the trees grow. This has got quite a curve on it. It's not, not exactly like the image that I'm looking at, but it should still work. You have another sharp, I'm using the sharp edge of this just to do a thinner branch here. Just then goes off. And all these little indications, we're just building up a, a picture of what we were, we are here to do, which is, which is to make this tree work. And then once we're happy with that, we can start thickening it out. So if you imagine at the moment, we're just trying to, you know, we're thinking about a winter tree without anything else going on other than the main branches that would be left at winter. There's a quite a thick branch here as well. I'm just going to apply that one, get that wiggle in. There we go. And now we can start to build up around it. Give it a blow, clean finger, where you can, try and just blend that black a little. You'll find there's places you're just not going to get to without smudging it, so don't panic. But I'm, I do try and soften these lines a little bit with a little bit of blending. But that's the rough, that's the rough shape of this tree. Um, if you're worried about height and everything else, um, with the tree, the, the tree height it does come quite high up. I mean, we can trade it. We can share shading with with this pale cream, the canopy, if you like, of the tree. So we know that's the highest point. We know there's a big bushy bit here. Just work around what you feel um, is the right time to start adding and adding. So in this one over here, we've got quite a big bushy area that leads right out, all the way out. Uh, so I've now just got some ideas. I'm probably not going to stick to these lines, but it does help when you're trying to build a big picture of it. So now I have this dark green. It's quite um, a dusty green, so we'll see how we get on with it first of all. And the first thing I need to think about here is building up these um, all of the bit, all of the twigs and, and um, leaves and everything. So all I'm doing is just padding, just tap, 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 tap 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 just getting the edge of this green to work for me and then where there's more leaves I'll be more forceful more dense with my approach I might even do a little scrape because it's a bigger area but I'm just basically tapping this colour just tap 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 to give the appearance of leaves and all sorts of things that are living here just tap tap and that's all it is and we can continue doing this until we build up a nice big tree this area here again it's more dense so I'm more entitled to do a little scrapey tap if you see what I'm doing there I'm scrapey tapping because there's a lot of leaves there why would I spend all my time doing tiny little taps everywhere when there's no need we do it all as quick and as easy as possible you can start putting some lines and twigs in as well while you're there but I'm just gonna as again little scrapey taps here because I know it's more dense and then as I get further away tiny like little dabs just to show that these leaves are more sparse as well. And it's make, it's taking shape and making sense now. And where I've gone green into black, I'm going to go right into the black with the green, just so these colours actually come together somehow. And we've got this big branch here. And again, scrapey dabs, where it's a bit thicker. So do that.
Okay, so as you can see, I've just been basically building up and building up this area here with the embellishments of the, the um, leaves and everything. Um, just need to pay particular um, attention to just the overall shape of your tree and um, the highlighted areas where there's obviously more dark and more light. So I'm actually just going to add a little bit more darkness in these areas and then we'll go in and we'll start drawing in some lines for more branches and stuff. But it just helps with the overall viewing experience just to remember to put these highlights in here and there as well. Okay. So I think I'm about done with that tree really, apart from as I say, just we're going to put some more branches in and lines and things, make them stand out a bit more as well if you need to, like that one doesn't look very strong, uh, that one might jutter off, you've probably got all sorts of things happening in within these gaps here, so put some pandemise and put some lines in if you like, um, and yeah, we're getting there. So. Um, I think that's a good example of how to do a tree and then I'm just going to go back into this bush here and just put some scrawly little lines in with the black while I'm here might as well it all just adds this prickly bush just down here just adds to your overall effect and there we go so now that's looking a little bit more lively now we've got this um, green here um, we now need to think about how these colours are affected just on this top area here. So I'm going in with this brighter green. I think we might need to go in a little bit lighter, like a more of a corn colour. Um, so I'm just going to look at what I've got here. We've got yeah, we've got this colour here, which is a greenish. And all I'm doing is just scraping, just scraping on the horizontal to give myself the idea of. Just these layers of, of, of grasses up here and I'm just going to scrape along and they all grow this way so it makes sense that whenever you're doing anything in pastels just to work in the direction that you're digging you know um, grasses will grow like this water goes like that and it generally will work for you so now we've got darker green underneath the grasses and I'm just going to do the same thing, this time I'm scraping it up. That reminds your scrapes a little bit if you like. Some areas are much darker, like here for example. It's quite a dark patch, but we can go in with some even darker green if we want to. For now we're just building this up. So over here, I have to scrape a little higher. And you just very, very easily already creating the effect with the grasses even though we've done very little and then I'm just going to place my finger slightly over the two colours and just do that wiggle like we did before but only slightly over the two colours and blending them but very 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 lightly not much if I don't want them to meld into each other to the point that you can't see the highlights and lowlights of that grass we do that and then we do have some darker areas as I've said so I'm just going to apply some darker bits here and there with this dark green black and just carry on just adding in indications of what's going on here we've got some more grasses in front so I'm going to drag that down a little further just to create that um, yeah so we'll go for the bright green going down a little darker and then I'm just going to squiggle Actually, I'm sorry, it's the yellow green. Squiggle that yellow green just over it a little and then back down again because some of these looks like there's two layers and then we can um, we can embellish on that even more in a minute and just push that dark colour back. Just lightly push it back, that's all you need. It's really looking nice, isn't it? So all we need to do now is you're just minimising the amount of colour um, uh, paper that's showing through. So we can now go in a little harder, just in certain places with this yellow green that I've got. I'm going to thicken the paper up a bit so that there's 
I'm not afraid of showing through. There we go. And it does, you know, you could do nothing else and it would still stand up to scrutiny. You'd still look at that and say, where are your grasses? Where are grasses over there, wouldn't you? You would still believe that all day long. But we can make it look even more believable. Um, now we need to think about where the poppies live and the colours that are beyond them. Um, the good thing about red is that it will go on quite nicely. Um, I'm just looking over here as well, looking close up at the picture, something I've just not just noticed now. Um, just with a, a dark green, I'm just going to, there is some little trees poking up just over here. But I'm just doing it so light, so the dark, dark green doesn't show up very well. Obviously there's still quite a lot of light coming underneath there as well, so that will muddy it a little bit. But let's just go for the full factor. Let's make it look right. And for these, I'm just going to do little scrapes here and there, just so it looks like treetops. There we go. So I'll just carry on going right away. But we'll leave it there. We've got this tree area we need to do next, so... Right here. So I'm quite happy with that now. And it's just a case of working on building up that depth. But we can we can do all sorts. We can use pencils um, just to just add a little bit more to it. I mean, I've got quite a nice creamy yellow here, and I could just just do the odd little scrape, little light scrapes here and there because it's far away. So we really won't see much in detail, but we can give the indication, you know, of detail in our work. Just the lightest of scrapes. Nothing more needed really because it's so far away. I mean you could possibly barely see the underneath. But it just adds adds more de it just adds every, it just every little detail helps. And then where we've got the darker green areas, we can some poppy lines in, just bring them all down to that area. Yeah. It works both ways. I'm just crossing that line. And just think about how far away your grasses are and just add some lines here and there. Doesn't have to be wonderful. And it's your world at the end of the day as well, so you can do as little or as as, as, as much as you like, really. I'm just gonna gonna choose a line here that's stronger, underneath where these trees are in the distance. And then you can also add more and more highlights to it and things like that. But we really just want the idea. I think there's tall grasses living along here. And um, we've got all of these poppies and things in front of them. So I'm going to leave that for now because we'll go back onto the other tree um, and I'll complete that as well. So we're moving along with a lot of colour at the moment. Um, I know this is a challenge probably for anybody that's doing the intermediate. I, I fully expect that this is going to be hard um, for you to do. Um, but you all want is a bit of a bit of a challenge. If it gets to the point where I'm going too far ahead, that's great. We can wind it wind it back a little. Please, I don't want anybody to feel like they're being discouraged from this process and being able to enjoy pastels because the, the pastels are brilliant. They're just such a, a lifesaver for me. Um, so if anyone's ever, ever having any trouble or they're finding it difficult to relate to something I'm showing, by all means get in touch. Um, don't forget that there is three. Le there's two levels of um, free workshops I also do beginner so now I'm going for middly green and I'm just going to fill this area in with colour and I'm going to be really brave it doesn't have to be too strong but we do have to make sure this poppy field we can't just draw poppies on grey paper can we so we just need to start applying bits of colour and depth which we'll do with grasses anyway but this time with poppies on top so bearing that in mind, I'm going for quite a dusty green. 
Um, I don't. I want to cover this, but I don't want to totally drench it in pigment either, because obviously you want the brightness of the poppies to show up in the field as well. There you go. Mm. I'm just rubbing it in, just willy nilly, doesn't really matter. We're going to be making indications of, of deeper areas of bush and things like that as we go along. Um, so now that'll do. I think what we'll do is we'll start putting in that tree. Just give that sky a blow because there's a few bits of debris there on the yellow. So it's already looking quite nice. Um, there's definitely